Hi, I'm Nancy Gussman with Brick House Title. Brick House Title is a Maryland benefit limited liability company. Our mission is to promote affordable, sustainable home ownership through education and counseling of both buyers and sellers of property. We also contribute a portion of our proceeds each month to a charitable organization whose values are in line with our mission towards affordable, sustainable housing. What this means is that at Brick House Title, our goal is to give back to the community. We want to promote our buyers and our sellers and our investors working towards sustainable home ownership for everybody. And um, to that end, we do contribute a portion of our proceeds to those charitable organizations such as Habitat for Humanity and um, Builders Cares and other organizations that are working towards building low to moderate income housing, of providing financing for low to moderate income purchasers, and providing counseling for those homeowners who need it. And I'd like to welcome you to Wind Down Wednesdays. Wind Down Wednesdays is an event that we have in our office monthly for real estate investors. You get to network with other investors and the service providers who are going to assist you with your investing needs. You get a little bit of education. And of course, we're going to have uh, food and wine for you to enjoy while you're networking and learning. We'd like to thank tonight's sponsors. ACC Mortgage is located in Rockville. They handle both um, hard money loans for investors as well as they are a residential loan broker for the, your purchasers when you're reselling your property. Also, Novak Financial. Novak Financial is a hard money lender and a hard money broker who can assist you in your financing needs for your acquisitions and um, rehabilitation of your properties. Our presentation tonight is five things you need to know about purchasing property at foreclosure auction. The first thing you need to understand is what to look for in the advertisement. The advertisement on a foreclosure is the contract. When you are the successful bidder at auction, you are agreeing to all of the terms that were in that advertisement. So before you show up at the auction and bid, you need to make sure that you read that, uh, the advertisement carefully so that you understand what the terms of the purchase are going to be. So the first thing to look for is how much is the starting bid. They're going to set a minimum that they're going to accept as an offer on this property. They're also going to let you know how much of an earnest money deposit is going to be required and in what form. Most of the time, they're looking for a cashier's check in the amount of the deposit that you have with you at the time. If you're the successful bidder, they're not going to be real excited about you leaving the premises to go to the bank and get a check. So what you should be doing is bringing with you a cashier's check made payable to yourself that you can sign over to them if, if you become the highest bidder and win the, and win the bid. Um, you need to pay attention to what cost you'll be responsible for at closing. In most instances, you're going to be responsible for all of the closing costs. You're also going to be responsible for any association dues and assessments that have been assessed since the date of the auction to the date of the closing. You're also going to be liable for interest on the underlying note of the lien that was foreclosed from the date of the auction to the date of closing. You have to pay attention to what kind of title you're getting. Are you getting bare title, marketable title, insurable title? Bare title means that they're not assuring you of anything. You could be taking over other liens. You could be taking over any type of issues that are in the title. Marketable title simply means that they are warranting that you will be able to find somebody who would be interested in purchasing this property from you. Insurable title means that a company like mine can insure title. We can issue you a title insurance policy. There is a difference between marketable and insurable. You might have somebody who's interested in purchasing a property, but we can't issue title insurance because of some issue in the title. Or you might have a property where we could insure it all day long, but nobody's going to want to buy it. I'll give you an example. I had a property a number of years ago 
that I was very well and able to insure. It was a landlocked piece of property, and it was five acres, and it had a 12-stall horse barn on it. Now, I'm not quite sure how many people would want to buy it. How marketable is that piece of property? On the other hand, we were able to insure it. So that shows you a little bit about the difference between marketable and insurable. You also have to pay attention as to whether or not the property is being sold subject to the rights of others. And if it is, this has to be in the advertisement. So you might be taking it subject to a superior lien, like maybe the loan, the lien being foreclosed on is a second mortgage. Well, it's being foreclosed subject to the rights of the first mortgage. And what that means is that if you're the successful bidder, you not only have to pay the amount of money that you bid to the lender that foreclosed, but you will also have to pay off in full that first trust mortgage. So you need to be cautious and you need to make sure that you're paying attention to whether or not there are superior liens. The other thing that gets people oftentimes is IRS rights of redemption. So if all of the proper paperwork has been filed, then the IRS has 120 days from the date of the auction to decide that they prefer to have the property. So you don't want to be a successful bidder and then be, and then be forced to go to closing before the IRS has spent their 120 days and determined whether or not they want to buy the property. If the IRS decides to exercise their rights of redemption, you as the highest bidder would get back any cash that you have actually given to the seller of that property, but nobody is going to reimburse you for any expenses that you may have incurred in the process. The second item that you want to pay attention to before you go to an auction is the property condition. You should never buy a property sight unseen. I've had many clients who have just shown up at an auction, they never even drove past the property, they have no idea what it looks like, and they were the highest bidder, and they ended up spending lots of money that they hadn't planned on spending. So what do you need to do? You need to look at the property and you need to pay attention to value issues. You want to make sure that you're not paying more in acquisition for the property than it's worth. You want to have an idea of what kind of rehab and repair costs you're going to have on the property. And you want to know whether anybody's living in that property. So you might want to know why. Well, the reason is that you don't want, number one, you don't want to end up spending more money for a property than it's worth. Number two, you might have in your mind that you're only willing to pay $30,000 in rehab on a property, but it may end up costing you fifty, eighty, or maybe even $100,000 to make the necessary r repairs and rehabilitation in order to be able to resell or rent out that property. If there's still people living in the property and you are the highest bidder, you are going to be responsible for evicting those people and getting them out of the property. So you want to make sure that you, you have a property that is vacant or you need to be prepared for the expense in, involved in having those people removed from the property. You should have at least a simple title search done, even if it's not a complicated title search. You should look at the title to see what you're acquiring. Remember when I was talking a few minutes ago about bare title versus marketable title versus insurable title? For one thing, the foreclosure attorney may not have cleared all the title issues prior to foreclosure. We often get post-foreclosure properties that still have unreleased liens, defects in the chain of title. If they have not given proper notice to the other lien holders on the property, then that foreclosure itself might be defective and the foreclosure might have to be redone and you won't be the highest bidder the next time, very possibly. You want to make sure that you know what the restrictive covenants are on a property. If you're purchasing a property that has covenants as to who you can resell the property to or how much you can resell that property for, such as um, an HOC property or a moderately priced dwelling unit, 
um, then you may or may not be bidding the proper amount on that property. So I have a client who purchased an MPDU at auction and he paid $40,000 higher than the MPDU sales price. Um, there was a few issues. One is that the MPDU is not going to run the same comps as the rest of the neighborhood. Now we did learn that the MPDU restrictions will be released after the foreclosure process has been completed. But the comps for that unit are going to be the other MPDUs in the neighborhood, not the neighborhood as a whole. So he now has purchased a piece of property above the value of that piece of property. You want to make sure that you understand what the restrictions are going to be from any homeowners association or condo association. You might have all kinds of plans for your rehab on that property, but the association may not allow it. So you need to find out what that is. And again, we need to see if there are IRS rights of redemption and whether or not you're going to have any issues with the IRS before you purchase this property. So what happens at and after the auction? What is the foreclosure process? So congratulations, you're the highest bidder. You're getting an auctioneer's certificate that states who, you, who the purchaser is, and how much you purchased the property for, and you're going to sign it as well as a representative for the seller. The auctioneer is then going to file a report of sale with the court stating that you were the highest bidder for how much money and um, when the auction occurred, etc. You are going to have to sign a purchaser's affidavit that will be filed with the court stating that you are the highest bidder and that you are going to purchase the property for that purchase price. Once all of this is done, the debtor has a right to file exceptions in the court. Exceptions are something stating that the foreclosing trustee did not follow the proper procedures with regard to the auction. And therefore, it is a request by the debtor to have that entire auction set aside and a, either the foreclosure dismissed or a new auction um, handled. Again, depends on the circumstances, how a, how a judge may or may not respond, but you need to prepare for that. If you are the highest bidder, then you're going to have to buy that property. Your name's on that auctioneer certificate. You're going to have to be in that deed. The only way to change that in Maryland is to substitute the purchaser. This is a court process. You have to file a motion with the court requesting a substitution of purchaser and the judge has to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to allow that. Um, I will tell you that the judges are scrutinizing these and they're not going to be a fan of you selling your rights to another purchaser for any significant amount of money. So you need to keep that in mind that you probably are not going to be able to wholesale a foreclosure auction purchase. In DC, you cannot substitute a purchaser at all. Whosever name is on that auctioneer certificate is whose name has to be on the deed. And there is no process for substituting a purchaser at all. In Maryland, you're going to have a ratification. This is the court ratifying the sale. So what you need to think about is you put it in terms of that advertisement was an offer. When you were the highest bidder, you accepted that offer. And now the court is going to ratify that contract. It depends on what county you're in, how long this takes. It could take anywhere from 60 to 180 days for the court to ratify, which means that you are not going to closing for that time period. And remember, all those fees that we talked about up front, where there are costs that are accumulating on a daily basis from the date of auction to the date of settlement, you're not going to be able to close until after the court has ratified. In Maryland, it is expected that you will go to closing within 10 days after ratification. In D.C., it is expected that you'll go to closing 30 days after the auction. Now again, this is subject to change. You need to read the advertisement because the advertisement is going to really tell you specifically as to when you're going to want to close. 
And also, keep in mind, you do not want to close prior to the um, IRS rights of redemption if they apply. So what happens if the property is occupied? Well, you're going to have to go through the courts to get the people evicted. So the first thing that will happen is that you need to get a writ of possession from a court, which means that you have to prove that you are now the owner of the property, which in D.C. means filing something separate with the court showing that you were, that you were the um, purchaser at foreclosure auction. In Maryland, it's filing a motion with the court that's already been handling the foreclosure and you're going to have to get a writ of possession. You're going to take that writ of possession, and you're going to take it to the sheriff's office, and they're going to put it in the queue for eviction, just like any other eviction. Now, your tenants do have the op opportunity to file against you to try to prevent you from evicting them. Um, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. I have had clients who it took them two years to have somebody evicted from the property because the people knew how to work the, pro work the system. With that, we've talked about the foreclosure process and purchasing property at the foreclosure auction. Our next event is going to be on Wednesday, February 12th, and we're going to talk about the legalities of contract assignments. We're going to discuss what's legal about wholesaling, what's not legal about wholesaling, and how to make sure that when you are um, assigning contracts that you are keeping it legal and that you're not setting yourself up f for trouble. Please let us know if you want to attend our next event. We look forward to seeing you. We invite you to go to our Facebook page, Brick House Title LLC. We'd like you to like our page and all of our events will be posted on that page so you can know when you can come to any of our events. Please feel free to contact us. Um, the best way to contact is through our telephone number, 301-563-9669, or email us at info at brickhousetitle.com.